It's been a long week, but it's been a great week. It's been a week that we celebrated the life of one of the greatest women in the world, Sybil. There's no place on this earth that you can find anyone that has anything bad to say about Rosalind Carter. Not one word, not a news article, not even one person on the left or anybody on the right. I believe, Chip, the reason why is because she did not worship the donkey or the elephant, she worshiped the lamb. And so today, I want to tell you a little bit about her, the way I see it in my eyes as her pastor. I like to say, Danny, that she loved on me and my family just like a son. I like to say, Chip, when she hugged on my daughter and I watched them play with Orcus in the room there, it just melted me as a father. I searched all over trying to figure out what can I write and say about this great woman. And so, men, I have nothing to say to you today. I just want you to listen. I want to talk to the women in the room today. And the title of my eulogy is First Lady. Because that's who she was. To the caregivers, if you talk to any of the caregivers and pull them to the side and ask them to tell you about Miss Carter, they'll say she's an angel. They'll whisper to you, she is awesome. You've asked any of the sons or daughters now, yes, I call them sons or daughters because they fell in love with her. Yes, any of them that protected her, they say, Dancer, she is incredible. If I had to bring up Alejandro up here today, and he'll say, let me tell you, I love that woman. I love her with all my heart. She's like a mother. I never forget he was telling me how he was inside the surgery room, in the, in the room guarding her as the doctors was working on her. Why? Because she was a dancer. And he had to take care of her. He had to make sure that she was safe. But more than that, he loved her like a mother. We are here today not to mourn the First Lady. We're here to celebrate her life, to remember her, and to comfort one another as families and friends who finally remember the ones who life touched ours in so many precious moments. We're here to continue the mantle. If I had to go on and describe her, I would say she was all about a family. I believe, Chaplain, that if you did anything to the family, she might have beat you up. Because it was all about the family, Josh. We had a revival here at the church one day, a revival. And she lost her daughter in love, Annette. And she said, go get the pastor in the middle of a revival. Know why? Because she wanted to make sure that her grandson and her son was okay. She wanted them to be comforted. She wanted them to be loved on. She wanted them to be prayed on. She wanted to make sure that the family was okay. Her family, her neighbors, her friends all knew her to be someone who did not think of herself, but rather others and others' needs. Her care and concern for those around her defined her and left the most remarkable impression upon our hearts and memories as we remember her today. The challenge that each and every one of you are going to have is how are you going to see the next day of her legacy? Will the women stand up and be first ladies? Will the women around our nation have a little bit of Rosalind in them, where they're willing to fight for those who are hurting, 
broken and crushed in spirit. We're willing to look at a baby from Sudan and say, that's my baby too. We're willing to see another baby from Cambodia and say, that's my baby too. Are you willing to walk down the street to the Boys and Girls Club and say, those are my children too? That's who she was. If you ask the church members about her on cold days like it was today, on the first of the month or the last of the month, she'll be sitting out there filling out paperwork so she can feed those who need food to make it through the month. And not one time did she complain. A loving wife, a caring mother, a dotting grandmother, and a devoted friend. She had schedules. She kept notes, post notes. She did all of that stuff. But one of the greatest things I saw her share with me was that every time I came to see her, she would grab a pen. And when she would say, who can I pray for? She asked the question, where have you been? What have you done? Who have you helped? And finally she would say, how can I help you help them? And I would say, this person needs prayer and that person needs prayer. And the next thing out of her mouth, she says, get me their phone numbers so that Jimmy and I can call them. Many of you sitting here today during tough times in your life, you've had a phone call from her or a note from her saying, I'm praying for you. When Deacon Mashuk passed away, she reached out because she loved him. This man, not from this country, a Muslim who became a Christian, she loved him and his family. That's who she was. Tony, what are you talking about? Well, if I had to describe her and build a business case of who she was, I would have to take you to the only thing as always in print and read all around the world, several different translations, several different languages. And it's called The Virtuous Woman. My Facebook might say the virtuous woman from now on with a picture of her because that's who she was. Proverbs 31 and 10 through 31 says, who can find a virtuous wife? Jimmy Carter. <laughs> For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of a husband safely trusts her. She will have no lack or gain. She does him good and not evil. In all the days of her life, she seek wool and flax and will willingly work with her hands. How many of you seen Miss Rosalind work with her hands? It goes on to say, she is like the merchant ships. She brings up food from afar. I heard Chip talk about her making sandwiches on a plane. And all on the bus, we're laughing about the kids talking about grandma making sandwiches on the plane and handing them out. She was that merchant. And she girds herself with strength. And I want to tell you, during our weakest times, I've seen her love on everybody around her and give them strength. The AIDS, her children, this church, the pandemic took something away from her. It took her church away from her. She wasn't able to come like she used to. And she always asked, how's Miss Carol? How's Miss Mildred doing? How's Miss Sybil doing? When she realized someone was hurting, 
She didn't ask for prayers for herself. She asked for prayers for other people. Annette Wise, Phil Wise. I can go on down the list of her naming people asking for prayer for them. Polly, she loved you. She loved you. Ruth, she loved you. Maranatha, she loved you. She loved this church. She loved why it was created, and she loved what it stood for. See, there was no anger in her heart or her soul or her walk. When you met her one day, she was that way the next day. She was real as they get. She was the virtuous woman. And her lamp does not go out. And she stretches out her hand to the distaff, to those who are broken, those who are hurting. And her hand holds the spindle. And she extends her hands to the poor. That is who she is. Wouldn't it be awesome if we had a nation full of first ladies like that? Wouldn't it be awesome if we had a world full of first ladies like that? She was the virtuous woman. Every man in this room longs for a virtuous woman in his life, whether it's Nana, Grandmama, or even his wife or his daughter. Buzz, everybody longs for this virtuous woman. Some of you in here know what it's like to lose a virtuous woman. Well, if you lost your mother, or lost your grandmother, or lost a wife, you've lost that woman who was the foundation, the matriarch of your life. And all of a sudden, your heart starts to think about what am I going to do when your mind starts racing and tears starts falling. But I'm here to tell you today, you should think about Miss Rosalind and don't complain because she was competitive. Oftentimes on a compound, President Carter is in his fast wheelchair. And seek your service is pushing him at a nice little pace. <laughs> Miss Rosalind is in her walker. Come on, Tony, we're going to beat him today. Come on, we're going to beat him today. She never stopped competing. She didn't retire on the Lord. She didn't quit on God. Tony, do you have proof? Yes. She did more in her latter days than she did when she was in the White House. When half the country said we no longer wanted you, she said, I am still going to go to work. Why? Because faith without works is dead, been alone. And I'm a virtuous woman. Because I love my Lord. And I'm going to give him all I got. And all the way to the age of 96, she gave him all she had. She never quit, never complained. In the cold, she walked. I pull up on the compound. I asked the agents, how she, well, she was just out walking. Because she never gave up. Henry, she Reach out her hand to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her households is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. You heard Josh say, First Lady got President Carter elected to Senate and then to the White House, and Governor made him known in the gates. Known all around the world. The Bible says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. She was the virtuous woman.
When she sits among the elders of the land, 122 nations, strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness, not division. Why? Because when her husband grabbed the Bible and placed his left hand on the Bible, and raised his right hand to make a commitment to serve and serve well. She held the Bible. And as he made that commitment, she made that same commitment to serve and serve well, to be a servant leader with a servant heart. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had more leaders that kept that covenant and served well with a servant's heart? And not wanting you to serve them. That particular scripture goes on and say, at the end, her husband also and praises her, and many daughters have done well. And it closes by saying this, but you, First Lady Rosalind Carter, have excelled them all. That's who she is. That's what she would want us to know. What she wants you to take it with her. Take it in the highways and the byways. Take it home to your daughters. Is it time now for us to bring back the virtuous woman who can stop our children from shooting and killing each other on the streets? Isn't it time to bring back more virtuous women that can tell government that we should not be locking up the mentally ill with those who are in the gangs? Isn't it now the time that when men and women come home from fighting some of the longest wars that a virtuous woman stand up and tell government we got to do better without veterans who are having trauma? Isn't it time now? Rosalind Carter would say yes. You have an obligation today not just celebrate. You have an obligation today to live on her legacy and walk in her path. She would say to you today, don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. Don't grieve for me because now I'm free. I've won the prize. Jimmy tried to beat me here, I got here first. <laughs> I've won the prize. Tell him I beat him, and I'm waiting on him. But she'll tell you, don't stop. There's still too many homeless people in the world. There's too many people that still don't have equal rights. There's still too many people that are suffering from mental illness. There's still too many people that look at the color of her skin. She'll tell you, don't stop. Become that virtuous woman. And men, if you're listening, make room for the virtuous woman. That Adeline can grow up and be the virtuous woman of the nation. That Josephine can grow up and be the virtuous woman of the nation. That each and every woman in this room can be the first lady of her home. That each and every young lady in this room know that she has a virtuous woman DNA inside of her. That Michelle from her protection detail can be the virtuous woman in secret service. She loved you and there was nothing that you can do about it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you today 
for my friend, a woman that I loved, a woman that I'm going to miss. I thank you, God, for her taking a spirit and pouring into my daughter. I thank you, God, for her bringing these young men into the world that will take her spirit and continue to change the world. I thank you, God, for allowing her to be shared with all of us now, God, as our sons and daughter gets ready to take dancer, grandmother, wife, first lady to the world, when they get ready to take her to her final resting place, we will say, our first lady excelled them all. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.